Isaac, we can have a quick chat. <laughs> 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 um, how is uh, Berlin at the moment? How is the coronavirus? Uh, Berlin now is actually kind of okay. I mean, the mentality of people is quite different from Hong Kong that, for example, asking them to wear a mask is a bit difficult. And the, I think two days ago, they also had this like protest against like wearing a mask, like saying that if you wear a mask, then you're like slave, right? which is not logical to me. And, uh, but in general, people are rather fine. And in public transportation, we also have to wear a mask. So somehow, like, the situation is not too bad. But uh, it's just that, I mean, to really uh, kind of like fight against the coronavirus somehow, I think is more like we need to work together. <laughs> so let's see how it goes with mm. the second wave. But in general, it's pretty okay here. Mm. Well, it's, I, I completely agree. And I, and I, to be honest, I remember when I first come to Hong Kong in 15 years ago, I also thought wearing masks is really strange and really... Um, yeah, it's, it's a cultural thing. It's like here, people very, can't... It's very, very um, odd. Today, I understand, and today, actually, I wear masks all the time, and, and today, I would promote wearing masks, too. It helps. It's a, it's a sensible thing to do. But yeah. it is a cultural thing. It is, I think it really is a cultural thing. Um, and also those protests, to be honest, I, I don't take them that serious. They are, they are just essentially the right wing, <laughs> the right wing Nazis who, who feel they have a, a possibility to, to get heard. Yeah, a lot of conspiracy yeah. like things in Germany right now. Yeah. But like, yeah, it is quite surprising, but I don't know, it's everywhere in the end. Well, looking around the world, it seems to be everywhere, yes. <laughs> <laughs> voilà. It's a little bit sad, but anyway. Um, well, it is 35 now, so maybe um, I, I'm sure more people will, will arrive gradually, but maybe we don't have to wait for the very last one. So Momo, would you like to start first? Okay, so we start now. They already sent the room, okay. Um, welcome for joining the further study talk um, series. So ABA invite our college uh, having an overseas study dialogue with our current graduates and alumni. So this is the first dialogue and Isaac John uh, with uh, Peter Banz and they will talk about the further study in Germany. Okay, I'll pass the time to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac, would you like to start first and, and introduce yourself? Or may, actually maybe I introduce you first and then, <laughs> then we... <laughs> Okay, so um, all dear old students, um, if there are any, I can't see right now, if there are any colleagues, dear colleagues also. We're here today to talk about studying in Germany. Um, as I assume most students will know, I am from Germany. Uh, I, I studied in Germany myself. I do still have quite a lot of um, contacts with German universities and colleagues and former students of mine in Germany. So I believe I still know what is going on in Germany. But of course, I have been to Hong Kong for 15 years. So uh, my, my experience is maybe a little bit rusty. So we have invited Isaac Chong to join us today. He is a graduate of AVA. He graduated in 2011 um, from our BA program. And then I think in 2013, he started studying at the Bauhaus University in Germany. Um, which happens to be my old university. So um, Isaac and I probably even know some the same people, some of the same people and knows, certainly know the same city and stuff like that. Um, so today Isaac will initially share with us um, his experience studying in Germany and he still lives in Germany, as you can see from the background of his, of his video feed. Um, and so he can also maybe talk a little bit about his experience living in Germany maybe learning the language, um, costs, all that kind of thing. Um, so maybe initially, Isaac, you may start, and then later we have time for questions and, and we can discuss further um, if there are any, okay? So please, sure. Isaac, to you. 
Thank you for having me here. And it's so good to see everyone <laughs> like Momo and Peter and Lilian um, virtually. And yeah, right now I'm in Berlin. Uh, I maybe I think to begin, I think it would be good. Maybe I just talk a bit about me and also like how I started like uh, from my studies in AVA and then how I ended up like in Germany. And um, I can, maybe I just show you the PDF that I made here. So, so my name is Isaac Chong Wai and I'm, uh, well, I'm, I grew up in Hong Kong and, uh, and I was studying, like Peter also said, I was studying um, like what you study now. And in 2013, I, moved to Weimar, like in Germany. So you see here Bauhaus Universität uh, uh, Weimar, Master of Fine Art. And the program that I studied was called uh, Public Arts and New Artistic Strategies. And there's one, uh, so like, um, this is like what I was doing, like when I was in, um, it was my final project. It was actually with Momo, <laughs> like the, the honors project. And I, I was doing like a series of, uh, performance and and then that was my final project and then actually there's one year gap uh, between Germany and uh, and AVA after my graduation from AVA I actually moved to France I I studied French there so in the beginning I was thinking about okay I I want I'm not so sure if I want to do a master so after my graduation I just uh, I wanted to go somewhere. It was like an uh, honors project was like so hard. And I was like, okay, I need to go somewhere. And um, so I went to France uh, back then. I was also with um, Baptist University. They had a program uh, in, in France. So I went there with them and then I stayed in France after the program. And in France, it was like uh, I, had a, I had one year to only learn the language at the same time to just think about if I want to study um, more, if I want to do a master. So back then, my, what I was thinking for my career was more like, okay, like I've done a lot of art, but I don't know what exactly I want to do. So uh, if I learn a language, um, that will be helpful anyways, like if I do something else. But like when I was in France, I was still like um, doing a lot of art. And here is actually a picture that I was uh, strolling with a fish and following someone who's strolling with a dog. And so like in France, I kept on still producing artwork and having exhibitions in Hong Kong. And so I was like, yeah, why not? I also wanted to stay in Europe. So wanting to stay in Europe was also one of the reasons why I continue my studies because if you want to enter Europe or if you want to enter, like, I don't know, live in Europe, you need to have a reason. You, you can, of course, visit for three months, but if you want to stay here for longer to get all this kind of visa, studying is easier. And also studying at university is easier than just getting a language visa. Like, um, visa is also a very annoying thing like if you get a language visa it doesn't mean that like you can stay here so you can get a language visa for one year and then after that they will just tell you no you can't stay here or something like that and but like if you get like uh, i will also talk maybe more about the visa thing later so anyways i i i was in france and then i was applying i for like uh, universities, I apply some in France and I also apply one in Germany, which is what I like, the one that I study in the end. And, um, and then, so this is how I ended up like uh, at Bauhaus. And um, I was mainly just using internet. So I was mainly using internet to search what kind of courses that I wanted to study. And uh, one of the reasons why I chose this public art study is also because like uh, they use English. So it's an international group. They have like back then when I was studying, we had students like from Colombia, from Romania, from uh, basically everywhere. A lot of students also from Eastern European countries, from Germany, of course, and uh, from Argentina. Um, Korea and so it's very international they somehow curate a whole group like group of students very international with different backgrounds 
and some of the students are most of the students are artists and we were having ages like uh, our age were ranging around like back then I was 23 or 22 uh, 23 and we also have people who are like uh, more like in their 30s or like 40s like that so it's like different age as well and I think I was the youngest when I was doing the um, the master program there and uh, then I think I don't know maybe I can also talk a bit about like uh, how they do the studies like when when I was there or if you have any question Peter I don't have any questions, but maybe for everyone to note, I put some links already in the chat. So you can see um, the, for example, a link to the study program that um, Isaac just mentioned. Um, and um, I'm putting the English language um, links into the chat, so you may copy it from there if, you, if you're interested while he's talking or later to have a look. But anyway, otherwise I don't have any questions at this moment. Please continue. Great. I would then uh, also like, talk about the program, uh, let me see, here, not here. So this is um, the program that I study, Public Art and New Artistic Strategies and uh, by Prof Professor Danisa Sadakic from Sarajevo. And um, so the studies basically like we are having um, uh, the structure is like every year, of course, we have new students. And for the student who is in the year one, uh, it's also studying with the year two. So it's not like uh, we're totally separated. But at the same time, like we have different programs. So like I will like the structure of studying is like um, um, we have seminar of course like we have seminar like a lot of discussion and we have also like lectures and uh, we also have mentorship or like um attendita will be like talking to you or like was talking to me about like uh, um, my works and and um and we also organize like our student ourselves organize like uh like like lectures like we invite people from outside to give lectures and um, I think back then when I was studying, we had to, we basically just have to read a lot. Like uh, we have half theory and also half uh, uh, like practice. And basically they would just give you a list of, I think it's the same, just like list of reading. But uh, I think in the master, just that you would expect lots of discussion. And you also should, didn't expect professors giving you anything <laughs> because most likely is like you learn from the other students so we were more like uh, so professors won't be like oh giving lectures but most of the time they would be like just um, inviting the guests or like curators or like different people that they know to give us some workshop or like um, every time is different and um, also one interesting thing or like exciting thing that I liked about the program um, was uh, the projects that they were doing. So I can show you here is the website. Um, we have selected projects here. Of course, I wasn't doing all the projects here because like every year and they have different kinds of projects. And for example, I was here like acting space for example they were in 2014 they were collaborating with a local uh, art festival and then uh so the and then we have our own program so the mfa were participating um the festival and then we organize our own program for public audience and the way how we do it is that like we have a lot of students but not all the students will participate like um, students will have to, it's like in real life, in reality, students will have to submit a propo proposal. And then there is a curatorial team uh, from, from the university. And then, uh, I mean, the professor, they will select some works and also have to get approved by the festival. Then you can join the festival. 
And um, so there are like programs. So these are the things that people were doing. For example, like we are, I mean, focusing on public art. So for example, here we're de dealing with like monuments of like a, a historic, it's a long story. Maybe I shouldn't talk about this work. So a lot of like intervention in public space, like fallen sculpture and some um, students were also like uh, transforming the the student dormitory into something fabulous and then they have a like a interesting tour and um, yeah some landscape performance and yeah these are like the kinds of work that we were doing because I think like the study also focused a lot in um, the public sphere the political sphere like understanding public space understanding how it could be Becomes like a playground for us and also trying to find a new strategies to deal with all this kind of context and history and uh, also a lot of research so and um, so this is like the kind of project there are so always like they have a fixed projects that everyone have to do maybe an exhibition like uh and they also have for example this one is rather like a bigger project it's called imaginary Bauhaus museum um we were collaborating with maxim goki theater in berlin and we were like having our own program in the theater so like we were like uh what did we do like we we're having lectures and performance and here we have hot pot and we also have a cinema room that screening all like the students work and a lot of discussion and um and public performance um so th like this was like um uh like a program in the end also ended up like uh like a bigger projects in the museum that in Weimar at Schiller Museum during the Bauhaus 100 years um we actually had this um like uh, projects in the museum that we were just showing the works there and yeah, like see the works. Some are not working the pictures, but um, I mean, when you, you can also just check these websites, then I mean, you will see it and then you will get a better understanding about like the the program. I mean, the structure is like we have fixed program and that everyone has to join, like all the students have to produce something, present something, and sometimes we have budget, sometimes we don't. There are also other programs, such as the one that I just showed you, like with the art, uh, sorry, it's not here, with the art festival or like some other program like uh, like this, uh, it was a publication that we published a book uh, with a foundation. And that was like also curated, like uh, we were having performance, I was here and, um, and some public intervention. And so this like, so we have fixed program, but at the same time, there are program. If you want to join, you can submit your proposal. So when you submit the proposal, you also has to be selected in order to be in the program. And uh, I think one exciting project that we had was here is like we were working in a prison. So you see the, here, like there's an installation created by one of our artists, like it's a ring, like making a ring in, um, in a prison, like a piercing or like some people are duplicating the, uh, the keys. I was like, making a boat to travel to the prison. And um, this is like how we study, like we were just sitting and talking about our ideas and we comment on each other and also criticize each other. So somehow like um, every year, so if you, I mean, if any of you would come to study, the, the project would be different. So because like every year there are different projects, it's not like every year we do something in a prison and uh, these are only the projects that I was doing when I was studying. And uh, so more or less, like, I think the program there is, is like that. Like we also have um, uh, 
uh, a big focus, I think big focus on history and a lot of discussion about memorial and monument because of the city that we were studying, which is in Weimar and Weimar Republic has a very important history in Germany. And, um, and then we were dealing with a lot of like monuments and, and m mostly like context in the public space. Um, also more like focusing on the lo locality, like uh, what are the locals are thinking and um, I can, so here is the program. Maybe I can also tell you a bit quickly, like what I have done during that program. Like I, those projects was somehow realized during my studies at the same time supported by the studies. Let me just show you um, <clears throat> the PDF again. So um, here uh, was like one program that we, uh, we did uh, in Sarajevo. Sarajevo is in Bosnia in Eastern Euro uh, Europe and um, our professor is from Sarajevo. So somehow like she brought us, like she got some funding. We are constantly applying for time different projects. In the end, we got this funding and then we were traveling to uh, Sarajevo. And in Sarajevo, we, uh, we spent two weeks there and we were basically all the students were there and we were just like, have to produce something. We can, you can do research and some people, for example, doing photography. I was doing a performance to paint the roses in the Latin Bridge, which is the place where we, the First World War started. And um, to respond to a m monument. And there are also other artists doing a lot of different things. For example, intervention like um, queuing in front of a closed museum, or uh, it's very interesting because it, we, we go to a new city and then it's just a playground that we do. But it's not that they always have this kind of trip. It's, um, it's, it was a program that I, I joined in. And back then I was also doing like, for example, in Sahayev would have a lot of bullet holes and it somehow inspires me to do this work called the silent wall, which I'm also constantly showing very often this work, like a video work. Um, so somehow, I don't know, it's like a chance that is in Europe is quite easy to travel. I mean, going to Sahayev was just like two or three hours flight and it wasn't very expensive. And you get to see <clears throat> so many different things. Sorry. Uh, here was the prison that I mentioned. Like it was a playground. It was a really good playground that um, we could do different things. So my project was to ask the prison, um, like the manager, I asked them, oh, can I cut your fences? So in the end I cut out the fences and I make like a boat here like this is like a prison boat and uh this is still in the prison so it was like a student organized i mean of course like we talked to the professor but there's everything we organized by ourselves like the curatorial um things we would just uh decide everything but at the same time uh in discussion with the professor i think it's kind of like doing pressure but it's just the playground is a bit different and um some performance in public space re responding to like the monument. Uh, Peter maybe know this because this is like at Goethe Platz, like uh, we always see this pedestal. And uh, like also like performance. Uh, this is very sin like, uh, like a key fi picture of uh, Weimar that we see uh, Goethe and Schiller. Actually a key and picture of Germany. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, super this monument important. That you, the monument that you see in the background is the most photographed monument in Germany. And essentially almost every um, travel guide or something like that has this, the monument, these two bronze men in the back, they are, they're very important for the German image or German branding. Mm. Yeah, like I somehow like, I don't know, before I came to Germany, I don't pay attention to monument at all. <laughs> but I think it's more like the studies that like the reading that they gave us and, uh, and the discussion that we had, the city that we were living in somehow changes uh, how we think. I would also say the program changes quite a lot of how I, I do my work. And um, 
So these are, this is also like at the, uh, at the Maxim Gorky Theater in the end, I also use my breath to cover the, um, yeah, the window and also using video effect for that. And uh, this was also produced during the, the MFA. And, and actually I wasn't supposed to be in this program. I mean, uh, I was invited to this program. So sometimes it's like, um, what I did is I actually did, normally we do four semesters. Like, so it's two year studies and three semesters, we have projects, seminar and lectures and different stuff. And for the last semester, you only write a thesis. And when I was doing this work, I was actually writing my thesis. And, um, and then uh, I think Danica told me, ah, oh, do you still want to join this program? Because it's quite good that we're showing in a very prestigious uh, theater and it's a really good program that so many audience are gonna come. So she also invited me to do something there and then I did something there. And uh, so like with them, it's like, uh, I mean, for semester, I actually have one break in between. So I, in the end, I use five, some like five, uh, like two and a half years to finish the master because um, you can do something called Ulao semester, like the holiday semester, and you can just apply for it and say that with a reason. For example, back then my reason was, uh, was to study German and internship. So I, uh, so in between my studies, I, did an internship in uh, in Berlin at a nonprofit art space, and while I was also studying German, and also back then I was so sick of Weimar. <laughs> Weimar is so small, it's really cute, beautiful, but it's so boring. Like so, I was like, oh, okay, I need to go somewhere. So I went to Berlin, and then I was like uh, uh, working in Berlin just to get a change. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> I would get crazy. It's really small. I think for Hong Kong people. <laughs> Like that size is like, you, you. I mean, it's really nice. Whenever you go outside, you definitely will see people that you know. And then you will say, hi, how are you? And you will see the same person a few times a day. And uh, it's that small. So I, I mean- yeah, say I, have, I'm, I'm, I come from Weimar. I lived in Weimar 10 years. When I go back there today, I still meet the people on the street. <laughs> And nothing changed. Like, well, very little change, yes. And yeah, like, but, I mean, it, it, little change, yeah. But, but I, I, and I completely agree with what you said, but um, I would also, I actually, as a student and also as a staff later at the Bauhaus University, I, I kind of actually l appreciated the smallness because it, there was little distraction. It, it kind of make you focus on your work, on your studies, on whatever. But it also, and certainly when I was a student there, um, as you actually also already said, um, because there is nothing there, you actually are more encouraged to make it yourself. So if yeah. we want to have a party, we make the party. If we want to have yeah. an exhibition, we make the exhibition. We don't wait for somebody to invite us or to, to um, suggest it or something like that. If you want to do something, you find a way and you do it. And um, I thought that was actually, I, I quite enjoyed that. I, I think that was quite nice. And in, if it was a bigger city, like for example, Berlin or Hamburg or something like that, it would be uh, more difficult because there's, it's just bigger, you know, you don't know the people, you don't know the spaces so well. But anyway, yes, I agree. Weimar is very small. Yeah, it's very small. And what Peter said was actually totally right, because like, to be honest, I mean, if I wasn't that bored, I won't be producing that many works. <laughs> so it was like, you, if you don't produce works, like what can you do? Like, uh, then you do reading and then you do research and, uh, and there's also a lot of possibility in the cities. Um, that like in a big city, you might not even find those kind of chances. Um, like I'm now I'm in a big city and it's very different. And to be honest, I won't, I, I get projects in Berlin and now I'm also working with a Berlin gallery, but like uh, is very, even like, like living here for such a long time, it's very difficult to get projects there. And so like here is more like what we did in the art festival that I mentioned to you. And uh, back then was like a work that invited um, hundreds of people and to talk about their personal stories at a historical square, which was built by Hitler. 
and it's a very loaded historical um, square. And everyone was telling me that, oh, you won't be able to do this work. Uh, like it's so sensitive and it's like, no one wants you to do that. And, but in the end, uh, I think with the program, with the MFA and also with the art festival, and I did this work as also my final work for my thesis. But at the same time, this work actually was proposed when I was um, doing the application. <laughs> Uh, to the university. So I proposed this work uh, and then I also end with this work. So this work was like, um, yeah, without the MFA, I won't be able to uh, produce the work. And somehow it also brings me like, like further away in my career. May I also kind of just inter throw in again, um, we're going to talk about uh, studying in Germany in general. So later maybe we can talk about some other cities too. But the, um, at the moment, because both of us have lived in Weimar, um, Weimar is the, the center of Weimar or the, the main part of Weimar has about 25,000 people, which is like Pink Shaker State, um, but spread out. So it's, it's a very small community. But at the same time, Weimar has 29 museums um, and two universities. Um, so you have a very, very small city, but with a very, very high degree of, of um, culture and with educational. So I think out, uh, almost a, quart a quarter of all population are students. 25% of the city population are students. So essentially, as Isaac was saying, um, the, there's, a, there's a lot of pressure also for the city government, for the people who are responsible. There's 25% students, so essentially they have to move. They, they, they have to um, give you permissions and stuff like that because there's simply too many people, too many students. And they, um, of course, not everything always will work, but generally speaking, um, the, the willingness to participate and to allow activities in the public space or something like that is is quite big and another thing that I personally I'm not sure whether it happened while um, Isaac was there but when I was teaching in Weimar um, there was the annual sort of like Rundgang like like an annual yeah. show for all students and they I mean, at that occasion um, this literally the students would go around the city and they would be looking for empty shops and then they would approach the, sh the shop owners for, for those empty shops and ask them whether for one week they could get those shops for free to do exhibition in these shops. And then you would suddenly have like 20, 30 little galleries everywhere in the city. And you can, for one weekend or four days, you can kind of walk around the city and you kind of discover all these little exhibitions and events and, and stuff in these little shops that are everywhere in the city. So from that point of view, I do think Weimar is a very nice place to study. Um, and if you, again, I put into the chat already um, a list of other German art schools. Uh, there's, a, there's a website for that. Um, many German art schools are actually in quite small cities. So um, similar to, to Weimar. Um, it is, I, don't, I can't really explain why, but it just happens somehow. Um, and so what is true about Weimar is, I mean, Weimar is very special to me because I come from there, but um, it is also true for some of the other places. So generally, um, the, the interaction between the cities and the, and, the, and the art schools is usually stronger than it is in Hong Kong. Sorry, uh, Isaac, maybe. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like what Peter said, like uh, during Hunyan, like the kind of like the final show that like we were also doing some different things. Like we were at a prison and then we were at a church and then we were like just uh, at a shop and or even sometimes students like the good thing is also like we can apply for funding. I was we were also applying for uh, we applied for some fundings to do our own projects. Like we have a project, we curate our own projects, we curate our own open call, and then the university is giving us money to produce the project. And of course, like it has to be selected. It's not like you always get the projects, um, like you get the money, but like there are 
like these resources that we can use at the university. And I think we can also talk about maybe the, uh, like for the living experience and study culture there, I think I talked already about that. Like basically you have to engage a lot. You have to basically talk so much. It's all about talking, like really like discussion, hardcore debate. And uh, for living experience, like Peter said, you have to do your own party. Uh, there are also parties, but most of the time, I think it's just like we hang out by ourselves. And maybe sometimes it's also like FIMA is located also like with other cities, like uh, with the student card, like the, the student card that they give you, you can also travel to other cities. So you can travel like kind of within the region. You can go to Yenna, go to Erfurt. So sometimes we just go for a trip or like to the nature. And there, the nature is amazing and FIMA is super pretty. But like, uh, like it depends on people. I mean, like I, I really think that for me was really good to study there, but I also know some alumni that they really dislike the program. So it depends on like um, what you are looking for. And um, for the tips about like languages and financial and living expenses, I would say, um, for language, uh, I think now you, it's not so difficult. You just need to get like IELTS, like uh, I think seven, number seven, like, uh, like the result and, or like any other equivalent, like a uh, result. And for German uh, back then, what I did was like, I was studying really hard with uh, like uh, in Hong Kong. And then I just tell them that I've studied certain uh, amount of like hours of German. And then, but like uh, the best way to do is, is like if you can go to Goethe Institute in, uh, in Hong Kong, then you just do the language course, then they can prove because they are also from Germany and Goethe Institute. Then you can just give them the certificate, then you can apply for it. And it's not very difficult because they're not uh, looking for like B1 or like they, I think they're more looking for A1 or A2. So like the, um, the language is like uh, ranging from A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. C2 is like native speaker. And A1, A2, to be honest, is really not so difficult. A1, you can do it even like within a month or something like that. So back then wasn't very difficult, but I mean, you have to focus, you have to really work on that. Like I was like focusing on German, then I did the, um, finished the A1. And also when I, I also arrived a bit earlier in, uh, in Weimar just to do language course and also to prove that like what I studied in Hong Kong because I wasn't studying in, um, in Goethe Institute. So I have to prove that and do an exam, I have German level and it's not difficult in the end. And um, like for financial in Weimar is pretty cheap. Like, like let me show you like, uh, I mean, now it's already like a little bit like more expensive, but like it's too cheap. Like, let me show you how much it costs. Like, um, oh, I like, I mean, you can also do this. This is like really fine and like uh, very cute and old and very clean too. And for the uh, student dormitory here, you can see like, uh, I was living here and this is the price. So um, for a room, then you get a room, maybe you share with two or like two or three people, or some of them are like the dormitory here in, uh, like, uh, I mean in Hong Kong. And you see here that like, uh, they are not expensive, like for a room, like 100 euros, like 1,000 something, Hong Kong, 1,500 or something like that. Then you get the whole month rent that you can stay here. And he, yeah, here is even, yeah. So it's like 1,000 something. Yeah, please, Peter. Well, um, as you, you were pointing out, what you see in here is, is a dormitory. Um, rooms um, in in um, that is not available in every city. Um, this is something that is in former East Germany. Um, they used to have a lot of dormitories, and after the Germany reunified the universities, they kept the dormitories. So in Weimar, for example, but also in Berlin, for example, you will find dormitories. But in all of Western Germany, so for example, Hamburg or Cologne or Munich, those universities will not have dormitories. Um, so 
this is something where still the two Germanys are still kind of separate. Um, to be honest, for me as a German, when I was a student, it was unacceptable to live in a dormitory. <laughs> Um, we would never do that. Uh, it, 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 you, it, it was just something only weird people do that, and weird people and foreigners. Um, the, what usually the German students will do is we will share a flat somewhere, a normal flat. Um, it is very common, and I guess probably Isaac is doing that right now in Berlin. Yeah. That two or three or four people together, they rent a flat with um, usually, you never. Sh we I have never encountered anybody who share the bedroom, so it's usually a four bedroom flat or three bedroom flat with three people, maybe a living room, maybe a kitchen, um, and then you you essentially share that. And then in the end, yes, I would expect to pay around. If you do a flat sharing situation today, probably two hundred fifty to three hundred euros per per month, depending on the city. Uh, some cities are more expensive, some cities are less expensive. But um, but anyway, so um, living should be much, uh, like rent living should be much cheaper than in anywhere in Hong Kong and also anywhere in most parts of, of Europe. Germany is, is, for example, compared to, to Britain or something like that, Germany is quite well known to have very cheap um, uh, apartments and rental places. Yeah, and like, as Peter also said, like in different cities, for example, in Berlin is a lot more different. Like Berlin now is so expensive, like not so expensive compared to Hong Kong. I mean, it's difficult to compare to Hong Kong, but like, so uh, like, uh, so the government also trying now to impose a law onto this like rental stuff and trying to um, have a rent cap for Berlin because it's going really high. And I think if you're going to the West, like Cologne, Dusseldorf, or like even in Munich to the South, they are a lot more expensive if you, if you live there. And Berlin is also getting more expensive. And uh, Weimar is still in the former East. So um, both, like the share flat and student dormitory um, is actually pretty cheap there compared to other cities. And uh, I also, I lived in a student, student dormitory because like back then I would just find, I find it quite easy to um, just to find a flat instead of like, uh, I, I was just lazy. I mean, like you could also like find a nicer flat, uh, share it with your friends and that would be uh, probably a lot nicer. But like back then it was also cheaper to do a student dormitory and the student dormitory was like a lot uh, nicer than the one at Baptist. <laughs> I was also living in the Baptist uh, student dormitory that year. I was sharing like a small room with people, but there I pay like 100, back then I think I paid 100 something euro and then like 1000 Hong Kong dollar. And then I get like a, a room for myself that's really big with high ceiling and yeah, so um, living expense is not so high there if you study in Weimar. I mean, even if you study in other like German cities, they are not like super high. And food and um, stuff, uh, they are also not expensive. And you have Mensa, which is like student canteen, which is also pretty cheap. Uh, one thing is that like you definitely have to have insurance here in Germany. Like, um, like the insurance with the student price is okay. I don't remember how much I was paying, but like it's not so expensive. But like after you finish your studies, um, if you want to work here as a freelancer, and then it will be a lot more expensive. So um, maybe now I can just talk about like um, maybe a bit about visa and also like how I stayed afterwards. Like um, so after I did my studies was like two in 2016 and I graduated in February. Then it was really like, okay, what can I do now with an art degree? And it's always like very like, what can I do? <laughs> no idea. And also like the thing is um, in Germany, I, I mean, I speak German, but uh, people won't hire me because I speak German. So people would rather hire me because I, I speak um, Mandarin or um, I, I can read Chinese and or like I, I can speak uh, fluent English like that. And, um, but I mean like German, in, like in general, German are really good at English. Like, so it's not that I have something like a lot better than anyone, but like still I, um, uh, I like for me, I was actually working. Um, uh, I was working in a gallery 
after my studies. And, and then with a visa, which is like called a uh, work seeking visa. So after you have studies in Germany, you automatically can get, I mean, you have to go to the foreign office to do that, but you automatically get one and a half years of work seeking or work seeker visa um, because you study, you finish like a university here. And within this one and a half years, you have to find a job. And, uh, and then after one and a half year, then you can um, just look for uh, like what when you get a job then you can of course extend your visa and in my case i mean i'm working as an artist and i was of course i was still i was working in a gallery or like some nonprofit um art uh, like art space or like i was working for some artist but i was working more like it's a freelancer so you can also apply for a freelancer visa here and i won't say it's very difficult to apply for a freelancer um, visa here, especially for artists. They have showed them you're, you're an artist and then you intend, you did your studies here, you intend to earn money with your art here, then you can get an artist visa. So, um, so then I was also working in things or producing some other artists work or assisting them or doing some different things at, at the same time while I was still producing my art and still like, uh, yeah, like showing some works in different space, uh, in different places. And then I got the visa of like freelancer. So normally you would get just like one and one year, or two years, then depending on your situation, you also have to show them that you are not using the government money to stay there. And so you have to uh, show either some contract or some saving to them. And uh, after one and two years, then you have to renew it. And by then you have to show them you're paying tax, you have like public insurance, and you also have uh, like, you're not using the government money again, and uh, like a lot of different letters and blah, like this kind of stuff. So it's very annoying, but uh, it's doable. And in my situation right now is that I have lived in Germany actually for seven years, or six or seven years, actually six years, let's say. And um, I could, uh, apply next year for like a permanent um, permanent residency in the uh, like in Germany, which means I uh, I can basically I just don't need to do this annoying process again, but which is different from the permanent Hong Kong ID card. Like here, the permanent uh, residency for uh, like for me would be that I still have to spend more than half a year in in the EU. Like I still have to spend more than half a year in Germany then, or like in the EU, then I'm, since I'm registered in Germany, so I pay tax here. I don't know. I don't know if this thing that you'll be interested in. Like, yeah, it's very real. You have to do it. You can't stay in Europe. But if you're leaving uh, more than like ha half a year, then uh, they have the right to just like uh, remove your visa. And um, yeah, so this is like more like the visa situation and how I stayed in Germany. And been, in the end, you just have to get lots of letters from all the institutions that you work with. And, and then I think uh, one more thing about other people who graduate from the program, I think uh, I also check, I mean, I think when you do research, I mean, you don't have to study at Bauhaus, but you might be interested in studying in different uh, universities in Germany. And some, they are only requiring you to have like, uh, you need to have a good German level, but like, uh, I think a good way to do the research would be also just looking at what the uh, alumni are doing, like just check them what they're doing now. I think with the alumni from our program, a lot of them, uh, I think uh, they are like either teaching or like practicing artists or like different other stuff. I think one friend also is doing it as a com comedian <laughs> or like some people are working as a designer and uh, some people are, like uh, just, just like doing different things, not necessarily like everyone is staying um, in like uh, in, in the arts, but uh, I think more going to this approach to uh, working with institutions or working at institutions or like uh, 
uh, teaching at the university. So this is like more how how it is. Yeah. So that would be, I think, the sharing that I I have. Or if you have any questions. Thank you, Isaac. While we're waiting for the for the questions, I would like to sort of summarize um, some some key points. I believe. Um, firstly, if you want, if any of the AVA graduates, if you want to go to study in uh, Germany for an MA program, Master or Master of Fine Arts, uh, usually programs in Germany are two years long, um, two years full time. We do not have part time programs. However, as Isaac has said, it is quite easy and very, very common to extend the study time to. Um, so for example, as Isaac said, you can easily go um, suspend your study for one term to do an internship or something like that, and then you come back. So most students take at, for a master program take at least five um, terms, two and a half years, but very often it is longer than that. Um, the universities don't like it, the government don't like it, but everybody does it anyway. So um, it's no problem. Um, it's also, that is also a little bit important because as long as you are still a student, you can keep the visa. So if you extend your studies, I think up to four years, you can um, keep your visa and only after that, they will start asking questions. Um, as Isaac has also said, um, especially at the master level, um, classes or courses programs in Germany are much, much more free than they are in Hong Kong. So you will have very few taught classes and it is much more about um, having discussions with your teacher, having discussions with your, um, with your classmates, course mates, and then to produce stuff, to produce work. And if it is design or art, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same in all of the areas, more or less. Language, um, as Isaac again said, I'm literally just repeating um, what he's said. Um, if you want to go to BA level um, in Germany, it is usually always German language. And for the BA level, they will require you to have quite fluent German. This is a, a, an issue of, um, the, the German, of a German government requirement. The, the, the point is, um, it is German taxpayer money. So it should be for German taxpayer children. And that's why it, it should be in German for the BA level. But for the MA level, um, there's more and more programs offered in English. Um, so you may look, whenever you are looking for programs, you may visit different art school websites and then you check uh, what is the main language for the MA program. And there are today quite a number in English language. Um, the same is true, you always have to go to, um, in Germany, you, there is no JUPAS system there is no, you always have to apply directly to the university. So if you want to, what German students usually do, we apply to five or six different universities. Um, and then you, you get some interviews sometimes and you don't get some interviews in other times. So in the end, it depends on, on uh, how you do in the application process. But um, you directly apply to the universities and usually the application deadlines are sometime early in the year, like January, February, March. It's different in different universities, so I cannot give you a exact date for everyone. But um, kind of prepare your materials by the end of the year, and then in January, February, and March, you probably will have to submit them to, to different places. Then um, there is, I would also like to say or offer, um, as I put into the chat, there is a number of students of AVA graduates who continue to go and study in Germany. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure I don't know all of them, but quite a number of them got in touch with me and asked me for help, for example, to write reference letters in German language. But also in a couple of um, situations, they have problems with the German universities that the, they don't recognize your certificate or they, they want some translation for something or whatever. If you have that kind of problem, please do contact me, especially for German universities. I can help you because I speak German and I know the German system um, quite okay. So um, this is a sincere offer. I hope not hundreds of people will now come, but um, 
But um, if you do have any problems with a German university, um, I, I'm quite happy to help. Finally, two remarks. Um, I will share my screen because I want to show you, oops. Um, uh, it seems I cannot share my screen. Um, Lillian, could you please give me sharing? Uh, I think you can share the screen because you are the co-host already. Okay. Okay, something. Oh, okay, uh, wait a minute, I, I need to, I have a new security setting, strangely. <laughs> um, okay, uh, sorry, I can't share now. That's annoying. Um, my, it says I have to, oh no, let me see, I try again. Okay, now you can, can you see it now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, firstly, um, what I would like to share here is a page by the DAAD, the German Academic Exchange Service. This is a German government um, institution that promotes um, studying in Germany to foreigners. And there is down here, uh, wait a minute, I changed the language. Here, there is down here a link, scholarships for Germany. So essentially um, for foreigners who would like to come to Germany for study, it can be short-term study, like only a summer course or something like that, but it can also be PhD studies. Um, so essentially, um, you can go here and then here there's simply a list of different, so here you can look for different program titles and stuff like that. But you can also um, study scholarship, research grants, master studies for all academic disciplines, research uh, doctoral programs, blah, blah, blah. So you, and then you can go through the various pages. There's a lot of material here. Um, and you can actually get funding. It may not be full funding. It may not be um, funding for the whole time or something like that, but there is funding available. And also, it, even except for funding, here they, on this page, they also have, for example, lists of universities with English programs and, and stuff like that. So that might be a helpful place to go. Um, go to the DAAD. Um, the German Academic Exchange Service. The other thing that I would like to share is um, this is a, a, a website that I put into the chat also. And this is essentially a list of German, this is the German word for art, art schools or art university. Um, there are 22 public art institutions in Hong Kong. Um, and sorry, not in Hong Kong, in Germany, <laughs> in <laughs> Germany. And they, um, you can see here, this is the number of students. So the University of the Arts in Berlin is the, by far the biggest. And then we have the smaller ones down here. And then the very smallest is Bauhaus University is probably somewhere down here. No, not quite down here. Somewhere here should be. But the, um, so here you can find this list and you can find all of their study programs. And I would like to show you one thing because this is some, uh, again, a, a strange German thing. Um, if you go through this list, you will find sooner or later, no, not in this university. Then I'll go to the next university. No, okay. okay. Now they're proving me wrong. Let me see here. Ah, here, for example, here, you. this is um, product design. And they have a, a degree that is called Diplom. Um, usually the English translation for Diplom is Diploma. And in Hong Kong and all of the English speaking um, countries, Diploma is a very low degree. Usually it is like a, like, a, like a certificate only or something like that. It's a one term, one course sort of thing. 
So diploma in other countries is not very valuable. But in Germany, until a couple of years ago, the diploma was the final degree. So it was the equivalent of the master program. Um, but about 10 years ago, um, the government decided that mm -hmm. all universities have to change. And we have to change from the diploma uh, system that we used to have in Germany to become a bachelor and master system as it is in the English speaking countries. Um, but so essentially all of the universities have changed except the art universities. The art universities or some art universities until today refuse to change to the new system and they keep the old system. So, and that is maybe a little bit strange. If you look at this, these are the different um, programs of this school. And here you have, um, here you have a master program. So one is new system and one program is old system. But the diploma in Germany is the same as a master program. Um, so if you see, and for example, because I did talk to one of our graduates and he wanted to go to a, um, a film school and he was looking for schools and then he was, he wanted to go to Munich, but um, in the end, he decided not to go because they only have diploma. And he thought that that was very strange that there's a university, but it only offers diploma. But actually it was the German diploma and the German diploma is, is the equivalent of a master program. So don't get confused by that. Um, double check for example, how long it takes to get this program, this degree, and then you will probably be able to clarify. Or, as I said earlier, get in touch with me and I will try to explain to you. Okay? Anyway, so much from me. Are there any questions? I haven't checked my... Uh, I think I got the question about the study fee and administration fee. Um, back then, when I was studying, I don't know if it changed anything right now. It would be better if you check like exactly like, um, yeah, uh, the study program that you're going to choose. And for me, I only have to pay the administration fee. I don't really remember how much it was like, not so much. Maybe like how, I don't know maybe just like a few hundred euros or 200 euros. Like it's really low, it's like 2000 Hong Kong dollars or something like that. So like the, um, the tuition is like for free and um, you like the fee includes like, for example, the travel ticket that you have and like the bus ticket or whatever. And so it's not a lot, uh, but I think it depends. I think Peter, before we uh, start talk, Peter also said that it depends on the state, also maybe the program, maybe some, um, if you do the public university, um, most likely you don't, but if you are studying, of course, like in private university, then you will have to pay a fee, yeah. And another question is why do I choose Germany to study and continue my career? I think a lot because uh, there are a few reasons. I think uh, the first reason was um, like uh, more like the contemporary art scene in Germany. They have so many museums and a lot of amazing artists and uh, I mean a lot of great works and German artists that I admire. And um, and at the same time, it seems to me is more international. Like uh, I mean, compared to France to here, uh, I think here is there are more acceptance to international artists than in France. And also back then, I think it's more also the program. I think at my um, bachelor, I was in the end doing a lot of installation and a video or like performance. And in the, I also remember at the like final, I was with Momo and also with uh, Dr. Ho. And, uh, and back then they were also like, oh, you're very familiar with like white cube uh, space. Why don't you just maybe try out some public space or like try to do something different? And so I was like, oh, that would be good to study something that uh, like combining like video performance and installation with more like public um, space, also more like theory. So in the end, I 
decided to do that. For continuing my career here, I would say uh, it's cheaper than in Hong Kong. But to be honest, it's not easier. <laughs> uh, even uh, like working as an artist in Germany is, um, I mean, different things. In Hong Kong, you have in a way, I would say less competition. In Germany, as a foreign artist, you don't speak the language and you want to enter their like German art scene is, um, is easier than entering French art scene. But like here is not that easy. Like, um, but the good thing here, I think for me, Berlin is more like a base that I like, I have a studio here. I work here, I produce here and I also travel a lot. Like how I continue my career is that I think after my studies, I was applying for so many different artist residency, not like so many, but like different art program exhibitions or like producing works and then people get to know your work. I think it's just these few years that I get more like invitations, like people would invite me to show something or like galleries start to approach me. But um, I think here for me is a good base because like the living expense is not so expensive and like um, for eating or rent is definitely cheaper than Hong Kong. Also you get bigger space and people also more open and you get a lot of input here, like a lot of great exhibitions and um, artists, friends that you get to know. So somehow I would say uh, for me, it's like I have a base, but in the end, all the work that I do is like, I think mainly in East Asia, like in South Korea and Hong Kong and China or in Taiwan. And also like in Europe would be like uh, sometimes the Netherlands or like I'm going to uh, Latvia late, later and I'm going to Finland to work. Uh, I'm, because it's quite easy to travel in Europe. And, uh, but most of the work I also do it in Germany, like Germany or like the UK, like, like that. Well, um, this would be yeah, more like the reason why I choose Germany to study and continue my career. Um, one quick, again, just sort of maybe summary about tuition fees. Um, I would like to say, generally, there is no tuition fees in in Germany. Um, it depends, as as um, Isaac said, a little bit on the federal state. Germany has sixteen federal states, and each of the federal states has slightly different policy, especially in southern Germany, which is Baden-Württemberg and Bayern. Uh, they are more conservative and they sometimes talk about having tuition fees, but I actually don't know if they really have tuition fees. They are talking about it, but I'm not sure what is the exact state at the moment. The rest of Germany should not have tuition fees. Um, we are, the German, Germans are actually quite proud that we don't have <laughs> exhibition, uh, tuition fees, so I don't think that will change very soon. Um, but there are these registration fees and something that is actually really very nice is the in almost every city that I know, um, if you pay the registration fee, it includes um, sort of like an annual ticket for the public transportation. So you get your student card and then the student card counts also for the public transportation. So you can use any kind of bus or if it is in Berlin, you can use the MTR and the subway and all that kind of thing for free because you paid for it with your with your registration fee with your student fee um, so there is a and, and I agree it should be around 150 200 um, euros for one term so that's usually half a year six months um, so about maybe 30 40 um, euros per per month but that includes, for example, uh, the free ticket for the public transportation and a couple of other benefits that you can get from that. Um, so in terms of the study costs, is uh, the direct costs are quite low, but um, it also means that, for example, um, at the universities, all the materials you use, you have to buy yourself. They will not provide you with any materials. They will not provide you with any they have workshops and stuff like that, but they don't give you free materials or something like that. You always have to bring your own. Okay. Um, maybe we'll have another questions, but I, I have to leave now for another meeting. 
I need to tell that the next round of dialogue is James from Switzerland and Susie from Norway. So don't miss it. <laughs> okay, see you later. Thanks, Isaac. Bye bye, Momo. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye, Momo. Um, there's another question for Isaac. I see in the in the um, in the uh, in the in the chat. One more question. As yeah. I know, you work with different galleries. How do you balance your time and work? Um, I actually like. It really depends. Like, uh, I think I work now. I'm I'm a full time artist and. Uh, I think before it was like I have a job and like when I start I have a job and then I uh, I'm like uh, producing work and then I do I don't know just like doing with different institutions and galleries like that and uh, um, how do I balance my time and work to work with uh, galleries I don't know it's quite is not so difficult at the moment because like I think a lot of works even like right now that I'm actually having a show in uh, in South Korea. I have two shows in South Korea, and one is video, <laughs> another video, and one is also, uh, another one is quite interesting. Another one is a performance and uh, a photo series. Uh, I think it's just like you use your way to, like you find a way to show the work. Like, um, of course, with the budget, they have a, since they have a low budget, then I cannot fly there. So you have to send them work that are uh, uh, possible for them to produce. And so in the end, I use photographs. And, uh, but like if I'm showing in Germany, then I will show maybe some objects or installation that I can be there, or even like I'm producing performance, then I go there and fly there. And um, I think in the end, you also at the, some, at the point, you also have to choose, like um, there might be like so many different options, then you also have to choose the ones that you really want to work with, like what galleries or what institutions that worth your time. And one more thing is also like, if they're paying you, like if they are like giving you artist fee and which is also a big topic here in Germany. And uh, sometimes you don't get it. Sometimes it's like really small, but you also have to live. So you, I always just figure out, okay, you don't give me a fee, but you want me to do this and I have to go there and this and that. So I don't show it there. And um, so I think this is the way how you balance the time. Uh, to work with different institutions and galleries. So I think we don't have more questions, right? I said, um, I would like to know if you mind share your email to all the participants. If they have any question, they can uh, email you directly. You can type it uh, in the chat box. Yeah, I just typed that. Um, Thank you. May, may I also just, uh, for, for Isaac's information, maybe just for fun, um, I actually, even after all those years, I still use your websites um, for my year one classes. <laughs> to, <laughs> <laughs> I have a new website now. <laughs> I just saw that, yes, but, but I, I used the old Tumblr, the old Tumblr. <laughs> Um, I still use that and every year yeah. <laughs> for the, the year one students, I show it as a, so most of the students who are in this talk right now, they should have seen your website before and they should have seen your work before because I, I always <laughs> use your, I use your, um, because it's a very nice website, I have to say. <laughs> Oh, thank um, you. I, I would also add something would be like Tumblr is good to start or like free website is good to start, but it's more like when when you really know that you want to work as an artist and the website is really helping out, like a proper website with your name there. In the end, it helps quite a lot. Absolutely, but, but that's precisely how I use or how I explain to the students. Um, I show them your Tumblr one because it's free and I tell them, look, everybody can have this kind of website yeah. and you can keep, you keep it for a couple of, and then later you change and you, you develop and you have your own with your own URL and stuff like that. Um, Yes, of course. Um, for anybody else, I also put my email into the into the chat. So as I said, if, in particular, if you're interested in studying in Germany and you want somebody, you need some help or you need some information, 
um, you're welcome to contact me um, equally. Yeah, thank you, Peter. You're so helpful. And uh, all the information. So great. <laughs> well, thank you. if there's no more questions, then uh, thank you very much, Isaac, for your time. It was very early in the morning for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you so much. And, it's nice um, seeing you. Thanks for sharing your information. And actually, yes, very nice to see you too. Um, and for all the audience, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you, you got the information that you, that you wanted to hear. Maybe I hope you got inspired um, to potentially consider Germany. Um, and then, as Momo said, next talk is about uh, Scandinavia. And we will be joined by Jims and Susie. Both of them are previous ADA graduates also. Okay. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Momo, for organizing. She can't hear this anymore. Thank you, Lillian, for your support. And Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.